It must be time for another Dueling Excel podcast. I'm Bill Jelen from Mr. Excel. I'll be joined by Mike Gervin from Excel is Fun. This is our episode 158, Working on the Railroad. Hey, Mike. All right. Welcome back. Time for another Dueling Excel podcast. Great appearance on Excel TV. Those guys are a lot of fun, aren't they? I hope to see you uh, next Friday, May 9th, uh, across the country from you, about as far as you can get from uh, Washington down in Tampa, Florida. I'll be doing uh, Power Excel Live. Hope to see you down there. I am so excited you sent this question in and uh, said you're not sure what the answer is going to be. You were probably assuming that I was going to knock out some VBA, but as soon as I read this, I said I have the perfect array formula that solves this problem. Um, so we are renting a rail car from 418 to 813. Uh, it's rail tank number 123, and the problem is the rates change. So from April 15th to May 10th, the rate is $35, uh, but on May 11th, it changes to $40, and on July 11th, it changes to $50. What's the formula that will solve this? Check this out. I was so happy that this worked, and it worked perfectly. Let's build from the inside out. So here's my opening date and closing date. I take the indirect of the opening date, colon, closing date, and pass that to the row function, which returns a whole series of rows somewhere down in the 40,000, but I'll have one row for every single date, and this pops out to a huge array of all of the dates uh, in that period. And then I pass that to the old, old lookup function. Why don't I use VLOOKUP? Because lookup is allowed to work with arrays of values. The first argument of the lookup can be a whole series of values instead of just one value. Uh, that does not work with VLOOKUP, so I say, hey, go look up that date. And here, this is table 1, 2, 3. This is table 4, 5, 6. Now, how did I create those? Well, I created those by selecting the range and coming up here in the name box and typing table 1, 2, 3. Actually, it's table 1, 2, 3. I should have used that great Bob Umless trick from a few weeks ago, where if you go to 39% zoom, you actually get to see the name of each table, although it is too small to actually see there, so not that good of a trick in this case. But anyway. Uh, the lookup table is table and the rail car number, one, two, three. Uh, so that's the table. It finds the date uh, because we're doing an approximate match version of lookup. It will find the date just lower than and return the rate for that day. Finally, pass the entire thing to the sum function and bam, we have our answer. Uh, put in a different uh, rail car, different set of dates, and it continues to work. Actually, I guess I have the wrong dates here. So this will be kind of a good check to go through and make sure that it recalculates. There we go. All right, Mike. I'm sure you were expecting VBA. I'm so proud of my array formula. Your book must be working. Everyone should go buy Mike's Control Shift Enter book because even I learned how to do array formulas. Mike, let's see what you have. That is amazing, Mr. Excel. I could not figure out a solution to this that was compact and efficient, and that is amazing. My heavens, this definitely earned you 10 points. Oh, man. Well, um, I'm going to kind of repeat what he does and change part of the lookup for the table and then calculate an average instead of a total. Now, of course, this little bit right here, we have row and indirect. And we concatenate the start and a colon and the end. Now let's just t check this out. If we highlight this, what is so genius about this F9 is it gives us a bunch of serial numbers. And guess what? Now we can treat this as the first column of the lookup table. And it's sorted. One, two, three. Look up each one of those, and it will just continually repeat, 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 repeat until it gets the next one. Repeat, 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 which is what we need if we're going to do an average. And by the way, Mr. Excel said in the uh, Control Shift Enter book, which I wrote, page 87, it talks about that. Page 75 and, and uh, 77, it talks about that lookup function argument. You know, the thing is, when I went to go and solve this, I got stuck down a different thinking path than this. It didn't matter that I had these formula tools at my disposal. When I went to solve it, I was thinking in a different direction and never thought of these cool things. You've got to be kidding me. Absolutely right. If I give 
F9, that lookup value, all these serial numbers, that instructs the lookup to do a function argument array operation, which means return a bunch of items. Now, the only trick is Mr. Excel did that cool thing with the uh, table name. I'm going to go ahead and create a dynamic range using offset here. That way, if we had a gigantic table, as we copy the formula down, this a uh, rail tank number will be the trigger for a different range. I'll use offset. The reference, I'm always going to start here, F4, comma. How many rows from that position do I want to go down? I'm going to look this up, exact match with match. Here it'll give me 1. Down here it'll give me 1, 2, 3, 4. So match, I'm looking up. Boop, that within the entire column. F4, comma, 0, exact match is what tells match to get the first one. That's going to give me how many rows to go down. Columns, whoops, columns, I actually want to jump uh, none over because I'm going to start right there or right there. So I skip over that comma. The height, count if. Now maybe there's always three, right? So you could just type three in to that height argument. But just in case they have variable number of rail tank numbers with F4 comma and we'll count. Now that'll give us the height right there. The width, well, it's always going to be 1, 2, 3, because that's our lookup table. So 3, close parentheses. Now right now, if I were to highlight this in whoops, yeah, that's the entire offset and hit F9, it's delivering just those numbers right there. First column is our lookup. Third column is the one we're returning. And of course, lookup, when you give it the array here, always gets from the last column. you got to be kidding me. That is genius. Now, remember, this is a function argument array operation because there's lots of them. So when lookup does this operation, boom, it spits out all of the numbers perfectly repeated to then do an average calculation. All right, so now I just go average. Now this is uh, this average function here is not programmed. That number argument is not programmed to handle this array spit out. So we have to use Control Shift and Enter to get it calculate. If I hit Enter, it gives me 35. It's only showing the first one through implicit intersection because I'm next to that data set. Control Shift Enter. There is the average. You've got to be kidding me. So uh, the moral of the story for me is, as so often, I get stuck down some trail of thought, totally ignoring some other beautiful potential solutions. Mr. Excel, 10 points. I'm going to throw it back to you. 10 points? No, no, 0 points. I got the formula right, but I didn't answer the right question. He was looking for an average rate, and I gave a total rate change that sum to average point to Mike. I want to thank everyone for stopping by. We'll see you next week for another Dueling Excel podcast from Mr. Excel and Excel is fun.